All right, so a few of the things here that we need to know when we are um, collecting our data. Okay, first off, there is a color map in there. Okay, so you can find rides uh, if you need to. It's not like the park is that big, but we put a map in there anyway. All right, so you should be able to find everything fairly easily. Okay, um, now the times that are required to work out problems, okay, can be easily measured using a digital watch or your phone or whatever. Okay, uh, when measuring a ride that has circular motion, it is suggested that you repeat each time measurement several times and then take an average. All right, like for example, when the mind bender goes through one of the loops. Okay, it would be advisable to take that one a couple of times because it's quick. Like it's like starts to up and it's over. All right, so you probably want to do that a couple of times just to make sure you get a good, a couple of good numbers there. Okay, um, same with the, because uh, a lot of them are circles, same with the swing of the century. Okay, I mean that one's much slower, but it's it's always good to get a few, um, a few of those or time it for several revolutions and then divide it by the number of revolutions. Something okay that can give you a better average than just kind of reacting on on one oscillation. Okay, since you can't interfere with the normal operations of the rides, obviously you cannot measure heights and things directly. Okay, um, but we can measure them remotely using our paces, which is why I have a measuring tape taped to the floor up front, up front here. We're going to measure off your paces and we'll put one at the back as well. Okay, um, so what you're going to do, okay, for a lot of the rides is you're just going to kind of approximate. All right, am I kind of near the the side of this thing and then I'm going to walk it off? Okay, and go. Okay, well it was four steps and one of my steps is this far. So the diameter of this thing is this much, okay? Or to measure the height of something, we're going to use triangulation, okay? So kind of like what's what's shown here, except we won't do it twice, okay? We'll get as close to the ride as possible, or kind of near it, and then we'll walk away from it, okay? Walk away from it several steps, and then when you get several steps away, okay, and having counted your steps, normal steps, okay, then you'll turn around and you'll use your phone. I think I showed you guys that before, right? No, okay. So on your phone, doesn't matter what type of phone you have, okay, you have a clinometer. And in uh, in the uh, iPhone, it's in one, well, I have it in the utilities folder, but okay, it's actually part of your compass. All right, so if you click on compass, the first screen is actually a compass, all right? But if you sweep it, it's a clinometer, okay? So can everyone see what I'm doing here? All right, so it measures angles. So what you'll do is after you've paced off, you'll sight along the top of your phone to the top of the ride and your partner will read the number for you. Okay, we used to do this back, back before we had this kind of technology. We would build what's called an astrolabe, which we, means we took a protractor and we cut it, we put it on paper, like we photocopied it onto a piece of paper and then we punched a hole in it and put a straw on it and hung a piece of string with a candy on the bottom. And we would look through the straw and the candy would stay vertical and the string would measure the angle for us. It was high tech, man, okay? But yeah, this is way easier and probably a lot more accurate than that. So that's how you'll measure the angle, okay? You'll just use the clinometer on your phone. Okay, uh, and then of course you'll have to do a little bit of trig. You don't necessarily have to do that at the park. Okay, I mean, you could, your phone has that kind of stuff on it, but as long as you have the angle recorded and your pace recorded, that's what you need. But you do have to be fairly purposeful about your measurements. If you're not, you're going to get bad data and that's going to affect um, your, your uh, assignment later. Okay, so that's the way we'll be measuring some things. We'll be timing them with the stopwatch on your phone, using the clonometer and, and pacing things off. Okay, there's also a part here on the physiological reactions to amusement park rides. So one member of your group has to be willing to ride everything. Okay, I mean, you should all ride everything anyway, but okay. One member of your group has to be willing to ride everything so that we get good controlled data here. All right, um, so we've got a list of symptoms here, okay, that you can fill in kind of before and after, okay. Uh, make sure you do this immediately after. Okay, the, if you wait, you know, for that person to recover, then you don't get accurate data. So be waiting for them or while you're like after the mind bender, you actually sit on the train for a little bit while they're kind of pulling you into the station. Okay, um, just do 10 seconds of, of pulse right there in the, in the train itself before you even get out. All right, and you'll get really good uh, data that way. All right, you only have to take 10 seconds worth and then multiply it by six. 
I've had people, and you laugh, I've had people that are sitting there for like an entire minute counting, right? Well, by the end of the minute, you've recovered already. It's hardly valid. So, okay, take 10 or 15 seconds and, and do the multiplication. All right, um, so put all of those in there. Just You just have to put the numbers in here in the data booklet because we're trying to save time and space. And the assignment booklet, I want you to write everything out completely. All right, and then there's a couple of questions down here. Okay, amusement park rides are designed to give you the illusion of danger and speed. Based on the physiological reactions and symptoms you recorded, which rides seem to give the greatest illusion of danger and speed? So, okay, you can put in some jot notes about that, okay, and some jot notes about number two as well. Okay, what design elements seem common to the rides that give the illusion of danger and speed? How do these rides give the illusion of danger and speed? Explain, okay. Those will be repeated in the assignment. So just some jot notes so you remember. And then obviously you can expand on that, okay, and have more of a paragraph answer when you do uh, the actual assignment. So this page will be duplicated in the assignment booklet. Again, uh, just put the numbers in here, but in the assignment booklet, I'll want every like the actual symptoms written out with maybe some description of them, okay? Uh, like if you say, you know, like here it just says nausea, right? But you could say nausea felt like I was gonna throw up, nausea I did throw up. Okay, a little more detail, okay? It doesn't have to be like if it was fluid or chunky, just, all right. Okay, so the first one, okay, that you're, the first ride that you're gonna get, well, you don't have to do it in order, but okay, one of the rides you're gonna do data on is the auto sled, okay? That is the small roller coaster, not the blue spinny one. That's the Galaxy Orbiter, okay? We are looking for the auto sled. It's a little, it's not the smallest little kitty roller coaster, but it's small, okay? It's a yellow track and red cars, usually red cars, okay? Now, this is the one people screw up most often because they do not follow these instructions right here. Okay, as the car is going up the hill, okay, so you get on down here and then you're towed up to the top of this hill and then there's, then there's a, a drop afterwards, okay? We only wanna know how, we wanna know how fast the train is going here and we wanna know how fast the train is going here. In order to do that, you, you have to pace off the length of the train. So when the train is stationary and people are loading it up, just pace it off, okay? Start at the front and walk to the back and count your number of steps. That will be the length of the train. We're gonna use that as the distance traveled. Here's how we're going to do that. When the front of the train passes the top of the hill, this point on the top of the hill, you will start the timer, okay? When the train is here, not down here. Okay. You will start the timer, all right? And then when the back of the train passes that same point, you will stop the timer. Now the train has traveled a distance equal to the length of the train. And you have the time it took to do it. So you will have the velocity of the train at the top of the hill, of the first hill. Everyone with me there? Because it's gonna be for a law of conservation of energy type question. We need to know the speed at the top of the hill. We're gonna do the same thing at the bottom of the first hill. So you'll probably have to watch this ride a few times because you won't get this measurement and this measurement in the same like turn of the ride, okay? So um, you get, when the, again, when the front of the train passes this point, start the timer. When the back of the train gets to that point, stop the timer. And this will be a much shorter time than this one up here is. No, it's hard to do the timing when you're on the ride. And you probably don't want to have your phone out. They kind of frown on that, okay? You should be observing the ride when you do your measurements. The only measurements we're taking when you're on the ride are the physiological ones, okay? Yeah, you can't, you can't like do the mind bender, you know, timing it on it. Okay, um, so pick a point at the top of the hill and start the timer, okay? And... Um, yeah, just make sure you do it the correct way, okay, so that we do it, okay? These are, okay, the measurements made for four and five are the most commonly made mistakes. Uh, this is the, the one that I had a group who basically was still doing measurements when we were ready to leave because they just never listened, okay? And they did this measurement wrong, I want to say about a dozen times, okay? Don't be like that group because they made me very angry and you wouldn't like me when I'm angry, okay? All right, um, so 
Number of cars on the train, number of people on the train is important as well because we kind of use that for a mass calculation, okay? Length of the train, obviously that's very important, okay? And then so again, four and five are the biggest ones. Height of the first hill, there's a great place to measure that uh, and it's right by the ropes, that, that big rope activity thing. You can actually walk right underneath the track at its highest point. So you can stand underneath it, walk away from it and get a good angle and good length measurement for that side of the triangle, all right? Okay, there's some qualitative observations. Okay, just again on the data booklet, you're not handing in the data booklet. So these can just be jot note type answers. You don't need to write big long paragraphs unless you really want to. Okay, um, but these, the observation pages are repeated or duplicated on the assignment. So you'll just copy everything over. All right, so I, again, I wouldn't write a whole bunch of stuff here. You can elaborate when you do the actual assignment. Okay, so you're looking for things like where's the highest hill? Okay, did you feel lateral forces? So this would be one where you had to ride the ride. Okay, where on the ride did you feel you were going the fastest? Okay, and where on the ride did you feel you were lifted off your seat? And how did it give you that feeling? Okay, uh, last time we were there, the flying galleon was under repair, possibly slash destruction. Hopefully it is still there, okay? Um, it's just a swinging ship. You've all been on one of those probably. All right. So this is like what we've been talking about in the last uh, couple of days here. This is a pendulum, all right? So it's simple harmonic motion. So this is one to do with the, the period and length and stuff of a pendulum. Okay. So you're going to need to time one complete swing. Remember that one complete swing is from the highest point over here all the way over and back to that point. It is one complete oscillation there and back. So wait till the thing is completely fired up, right? If you don't, uh, you get uh, you get weird data. Okay, everybody with me on that one? Yes. Okay. Uh, and then estimated deflection, and you can use uh, your phone, your iPhone for that. Same same thing. Use the clinometer. Okay. And what we do is we stand back as far as possible, and we just kind of make it so that it's parallel to the central mast. Okay, so there's like a crow's nest and a central mast right here. Okay, we make sure that it's parallel to that when it's at its highest point, and then we just read the, so we kind of just watch it as it's going and then right there. Okay, and we kind of just record that number. Everybody with me on that? Okay, so really none of the measurements are very hard, but you do have to be careful about your observations. Okay, and then the qualitative observations. And in each arc, where did you feel the most pressure against your seat? So again, that's one where you have to be on the ride. Where did you feel you were going the fastest? Okay, we kind of talked about equilibrium points. We'll talk more about that today as well. Okay, the space shot. This one's um, a tougher one to get your height measurements for. All right, and we want to caution you against something. On this wall, on the space shot, there are measurements in feet. And we have not found them to be overly accurate over the years. Okay, so I would caution you against using them. Um, what you're best off to do is to again pace it off. Okay, it's easy. You can stand right beside the space shot on the upper level. Okay, you actually board it down below, but you can stand and observe from the upper level. Okay, uh, so you want to stand on the upper level and walk away from it. That's actually where the ride begins. It is almost level with the observation deck. Okay, so you'll just do all your measurements from there. Okay, do your angle measurement to the top. One thing you do have to be aware of is, yes, on the first shot, they are fired all the way to the top. Okay, but they don't come all the way back down. All right, they may have started level with you here, but when they come back down after the first shot, they don't come all the way down level. So you'll have to make two measurements. They don't travel as far the first time they're coming down. Okay, and that is one of the things you need here. Okay, distance covered by the car during the first downward acceleration is less than the distance covered on the first upward. Okay, uh, and then check these two times as well. Right, you want to time those things. This one you probably have to watch four or five times in order to get all all the data that you need and have it be accurate. Okay, and then in terms of forces acting on your body, describe your sensations. So the first time you won't be able to concentrate enough probably to get these. Okay, it'll probably be the second or third time uh, before you're, you know, not just screaming your guts out, white knuckled against the harness. Okay, uh, so when you were ascending the ride, how did you feel? Mostly um, think about where is where is the pressure. Like, are you feeling pushed or are you feeling lightweight or is the harness pushing down on your shoulders? Okay, things like that are things you'll want to observe. Okay, so when ascending, when suspended, during free fall, it's not really free fall. Okay, and then while stopping, okay, uh, what are your sensations there? Okay, all right, the mind bender. 
all measurements on the mind bender have to do with the central loop. And the reason we do that is because you can actually stand inside of the central loop and get good measurements for it. All right. Um, when you are, uh, when you're standing on this catwalk here, okay, your eye level is pretty much the middle of the, of the circle. All right. Um, you can all, so you can't pace off the diameter, okay, but you can measure the angle and get the radius of the circle from the upper level of the catwalk. All right. So that's where you'll want to do that one from. So all of our loop measurements have to do with the central loop. Okay, so the radius of the central loop, okay, so see the picture at right, okay, time for one complete revolution around the center loop, again, you're probably going to want to take that four times and then add them together and average them, okay, predicted g-force at the top, predicted g-force at the bottom, that will need you to be on the ride, how heavy did you feel, your chin will be stuck to your chest the first time. All right, because you'll just and you'll just go like right around. Okay, um, the second time you'll be a little bit more ready. All right, the more times you ride that, the stiffer your neck will be on Wednesday. All right, this one, this is the one, guys, that honestly, if you've had a recent concussion or been in an accident, had any kind of neck or back injury, you probably shouldn't ride this one. Okay, it is, it's hard on your neck. Okay, it really is. Okay, um, qualitative observations. Okay, so what sensations did you feel as the train was passing through the loops? Okay. The first time, terror. After that, be a little more logical. Okay. Second, uh, second question: Where's the highest point? Okay. Um, where on the ride did you feel you were going the fastest? And where on the ride did you experience the greatest forces? So where did you feel the heaviest? Okay. On this ride, right? Think about those kind of things. Again, just jot note answers on the data booklet. All right. The swing of the century. Okay. Uh, radius of rotation. The nice thing about the swing of the century is you actually have time when they're loading everybody on where you can kind of pace it off. But here's the thing. You can't pace it off from the stationary position of the swings. You will have to observe and make note of where they are when it's actually spinning and then go in and pace it off. Okay. So from the center of the, of the top here out to as far out as the swings will go when it's moving its fastest, which is basically the fence. All right. Uh, so you need that, paste it off, time for one revolution. Again, I would time like four revolutions and then just divide it by four. Okay? Pick your partner and watch them come around. Okay, um, And that's that's the easiest way to do that one. Okay, um, This is one, the qual this qualitative observation is one that people get wrong all the time. Really, really watch this one carefully. How does the angle of an empty seat compare with the angle of an occupied seat? Does the mass of the rider make any difference? Watch that one very carefully. Okay. Describe your sensations as the ride increased in speed and watch the ride from beginning until it reaches full speed. What happens to the angle of the chain attached to the seat as the speed of the ride increases? Okay, bumper cars. Uh, and guys, any of these, any of these rides, a really good idea would be to video it with your phone. Okay, um, I would recommend videoing it in something with a high frame rate. All right, your phone uh, usually defaults to 1080p at 60 frames per second. Okay, that's not bad. 60 frames per second isn't bad. Okay, um, but like the newer iPhones, you can do 720p. I think at like 120 frames per second, which means you can really slow it down. Right? And it makes it a lot easier to make your observations. And the nice thing about it is it'll also have a time scale on the bottom. Right? So you can really double check your timing measurements with the video if you need to. So it's not a bad idea to do that, especially for the bumper cars. Okay? It's really nice to be able to slow-mo all the collisions that you have to observe for the bumper cars. Okay, So you have to know what things you need to do when you go onto the bumper cars. Right? Because First time, just go on and have fun, smashing everybody. Okay, then they have to simulate a few of the collisions that are specified here. All right, so go in there, have a couple of people who will be the drivers and a couple of people who are out there filming. Okay, and then you can answer these questions. So, um, what happens in a collision to each car when one bumper car is not moving? So somebody just has to sit there, and another person has to slam into them as hard as you can. Okay, um, a rear end collision with both cars moving. All right, so. Um, one car moving slowly and another car coming up from behind and hitting them from the back. Both cars have to be moving, but obviously one has to be moving faster than the other or there won't be a collision. Okay, That one's the funnest one to watch because usually people are like chicken out at the last minute and speed up before they get hit. Okay, um, C, a head-on collision with both bumper cars moving. 
All right, so you got to, boom, okay, as fast as you can. Yes, yes, we want to see the hair go forward and back, yeah, okay. Um, and then a, a collision with a stationary object. That one's the easiest one. Just run into the wall as hard as you can, okay. And two cars need to side swipe, okay, so just kind of come towards each other as you're moving and, and we just want to see what happens with that, all right. So make sure you get video of all of those so you can slow it down and really make good observations because your observations are really important here Okay, for the questions that will be asked in the assignment. All right, and that's it, okay? Those are the ones. You need to get all of the data. If you are in a group of two, you will only have to do five out of the seven assignment activities. If you're in a group of three, you do all seven, all right? Um, but you need to have data on all seven, even if you're in a group of two. Otherwise, you don't get any choice as to which activities you do. All right, so make sure you have data on all of them. In fact, I won't let you leave the park until you have data on all of them, okay? Really make sure you hang on to that data booklet, okay? If you forget to bring that with you tomorrow, okay, I'll have a version online that you can use, but it's obviously not as good because you can't write in it, okay? You'll have to make whatever observations you can. Jimmy. Yeah, or fold it and put it in your pocket. Yeah, no one's going to want to steal the booklet. Yeah, but I mean, usually you've got one person on the ride and one person observing, right? So someone can always hold on to it. Okay. Um, yeah, so just make sure, guys, that you don't forget that. You're definitely going to need to have that with you uh, tomorrow, as well as a pen or pencil to write in it with. Okay. What time are we leaving? Oh, I don't think enough people told me what time we're leaving. 7.15. Okay. So you need to be here at 7.00. All right, we are going to be on the charter bus. Mr. Dickey's class will be in the chariot of death. Okay, so we don't have to ride in the white bus. Okay, with no leg room and it's not comfortable. Okay, so we will be on the uh, we'll be on the charter bus. So make sure that that happens. Okay, um, any questions before we move on to going over the gravitation assignment? Okay, remember guys also, don't bring too much valuable stuff with you, okay? Uh, I know it's a long bus ride, but maybe like, just bring your phone, put something, you know, stream something on your phone or put a couple of videos on your phone. If you think you're gonna be really bored, bring a book. For some reason, no one steals books, okay? Um, yeah, just, if you leave it on the bus, guys, it, it could get stolen. I don't want that for you, okay? 